Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the 3D Printing Extravaganza Show with Lauren and Anthony. Today we are going to talk about some industry news and some helpful tips and tricks and some product updates. Um, I'm Anthony Byro with the AC Product Development Solutions. This is Lauren Aidy, our Additive Manufacturing Specialist and Guru in all things 3D Printing. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Sure. Industry news. Lately I've heard uh, some buzz around a certain 3D printing technology beyond even the Form 2 or SLA or Fuse Filament, like the hot glue gun printers yeah. uh, that most people are familiar with. And you were talking about it the other day too. Yes. What are your thoughts on metal 3D printing? So metal 3D printing is starting to become a little bit more affordable for people. Okay. Um, I mean, starting at around $80,000 all the way up to a million dollars, you can get yourself a metal 3D printer. You are living at a whole different level <laughs> if $80,000 is affordable. I more prefer like, you know, the $2,800 to $3,500 range. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wink. It's relatively cheap, around 80 k yeah, for a yeah. metal 3D printer. For something that can make a durable good that can right. absolutely be put into production without fear of, you know, material failure because right. it's metal yep yep yeah and you know over half of the metal 3d printers out there right now are using the slm or sls selective laser sintering technology basically firing heat photons yeah. at metal dust yep. melting it a little like bit like powder bed fusion okay. method okay which is becoming more and more common for a lot of these printers now so i remember fondly of course the first time i heard about 3d printing in metal um, and it was 2013, 2014, something like that. Uh, there's a supercar company called Koenigsegg. Mm -hmm. And currently they make, I think, the fastest production car. They shut down a stretch of Nevada Highway a year ago and the driver was going like 260 some miles an hour, insane speeds. It's possible because they actually have 3D printed titanium turbos in their car. Mm -hmm. And these are these are pieces that you couldn't machine with a typical mill, like it couldn't get in there right. to actually make the part. Um, but they were doing this in 2013, 2014. Like you're talking about how metal printing is now becoming kind of commonplace. Like they, they were almost like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, front runner kind of leading in they're paving the way they're paving the way <laughs> you're funny you're funny um but it's exciting to see where it is you're mentioning eighty thousand dollars to around a million around dollars a million, yeah. sometimes even more depending on mm -hmm. volume yep um who are the big players in like the real commercial space like hp oh yeah they got into it last year didn't they yep yep um you know when the like the goliath the big Big boy and girl companies start getting into yeah. it. The technology has really arrived. Yep. Yeah. It'll I mean, be huge for companies like in the aerospace and automotive industries for sure. I'm even thinking like normal production, mm -hmm. like printing. Anytime you open up any product with electronics in now, yeah. there's always all sorts of like little clips and snaps and stuff yep. that may need to you know, not expand or contract certain ways. That metal printing, yep. they can knock out pieces like that. Um, you mentioned in the previous episode mm -hmm. what you were really hoping to kind of see in the future in the industry, and I think you mentioned like metal simulant stuff. So if you can't afford an eighty thousand right. dollar, two million dollar printer, like getting a, a a resin that instead of simulating you know, rubber or or a glass filled compound. Mm -hmm could kind of simulate metal, give you the same kind of fracture strength and things like that. Yes. That would be exciting. Yes. Do you think that's to come? I think it might be. I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> I hope so too. Uh, all right. That's all we really had for industry news this mm -hmm. week. Uh, let's move on to something learned or helpful. Okay. What do you got for us this week? So I wanted to show um, some of the pieces that come in the finishing kits for the Form 2, okay. which is the printer that we sell at EAC. Um, so this is the build tray, build plate that the part gets printed on. So when it's done, it looks like this. You okay. take it off the, off the printer, 
But that's stuck to it at it's that point. It's stuck to it. Yep, okay. those first few layers are over compressed to make it so that it's stuck onto the build plate so it won't fall oh, off. Oh, so it's not just curing it, it's like It's, it's stuck okay. on there pretty good. Okay. And so some of the tools that And this come is just metal? It yep. is, yep. Okay. Some of the tools that come in the kit are the spatula. With every printer, out of the box. That's it's not correct. something extra people have to buy. That's okay. correct, yep. Another little tool and then a snipping tool for support removal. So the spatula is really good for getting underneath that part to kind of scrape it off. So you just kind of went all the way around. Mm -hmm. Is that what you recommend? Or can I you do. kind of just wedge it in and pop it like a cookie stuck to a cookie? It really sheet? depends on your part and how big it is and how complex okay. it is. Um, this little base, the raft that's printed, can be really small or can be really big. If it's small, you can just scrape it off with one one uh, motion usually. Okay. Um, but if it's a bigger part, you want to kind of get at every angle to make sure that you're not going to break or damage your part. Oh, I suppose. Because so. depending on what you're printing, it could be pretty pretty rigid. Yeah, for sure. Which kind of jumps into another topic for us. Um, like you mentioned, some parts can be harder to get off. Mm -hmm. I have heard some news from our, or not news, I have heard some rumblings from our engineers and from some of our customers yeah. that one of the the resins available for form labs machines that mm -hmm. i think is is the coolest resin it's beautiful like it is. it's this it looks like your part is carved out of ivory it really does it's incredibly yeah. strong i don't know how they get it so strong there's a glass reinforcement it's a glass bill really it is but it's a beautiful it's a beautiful piece uh, but this mm -hmm. has been known to you know make a very good love connection with yeah. the platform yeah and be difficult to get off because true to its namesake, which is rigid, rigid yeah. um, it doesn't flex. So when you're trying to pry it off. Right. All right, so what, what do you have? What kind of tips do you have for us? So I've, I've broken quite a few pieces just trying to- Wedge it in there. Wedge it in there and get it out. Um, when you wait overnight for your part to print and you go to it the next morning, it's not always gonna be warm like it is right off the print. Okay. So um, tip number one. Yeah, tip number if one. You can, if you're printing rigid and you can get to it right away. Get to it right away. Okay. That's my, that's right. my first tip. Um, it's a lot easier to remove this part off the bill tray if it's right off the print bed. Okay, let's say you hit print on Friday and come back on Monday morning. What do you got? Yeah, so um, some other customers and we've noticed as well that you can take hot water and pour it Right on to... I know where we got this tip. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Martin at CPC, 3D printing state, helping the world, helping the world one hot water trick at a time. That's right. All right, so what, what do you do? So you can take the hot water that's like in your coffee machine at work. So, so really not hot, just faucet water. Not just faucet okay. water, um, like the scalding hot water that you'd use for tea. Okay. Um, take it and pour it right where the connection meets. Okay. And it makes your part a lot more pliable and flexible to get off of the build tray. Okay. Now, flexible and pliable makes me a little concerned yeah. that, is it gonna wreck the part? It's not. Just try not to you know, move it around too much because we don't know what that would do. This Got not, it, it might hold the distorted shape. Yeah. So. yeah. so just be really careful to pour the water and then scrape it off with your spatula right away. And at that part, point, you probably don't want to use the, the bad boy spatula, no, it'd be too rough at that point. It might point. be a little too aggressive. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, those are two great tips. Excellent. Um, product updates. Yeah. We have, we have one big one. We mentioned it kind of briefly in the last episode yep. that we want to talk about a little more in depth. And that is form two. Mm -hmm. You can save money. You can save a lot of money. How much money? Um, instead of the thirty four ninety nine, it's now twenty eight fifty. That's a, that's a lot of money. A lot of money that people can save if they get a form two right now. Um, money that they could use to, I don't know, call Lauren up and get more resin to do different things. Just saying, but Thanks. <laughs> real real talk though. That's that's a lot of savings it on is. the form two and. The Form 2, when it first came out, was light years ahead of any other printing technology. And back then, I would have said that was the best time to buy the Form 2 because there's nothing else comparable right. at all. Yep. But now, I would say this is the best time to buy a Form 2. Yeah, especially if you've ever wanted a second printer or to add another printer to your workflow. 
Oh yeah, if you already have a Form 2, you mm -hmm. have all the stuff for the Form 2, you already have resins for the Form 2, um, and you find that you're waiting for other prints to finish, yep. get another printer. Because exactly. you, you mentioned like if you need a second printer, it's a really simple question to ask yourself. Well, like, what, why would someone need a second printer? They've got a print queue. Yeah, if you're waiting, mm -hmm. if you're waiting. Um, so yeah, are there any caveats or is it simply that's... Well, it's limited supply. So oh, okay. get them while they're hot. <laughs> so when they're gone, they're gone. Okay, So. all right. And that's because there's another printer, the Form 3. Form 3 that we touched on in the last video. All right, so the moral of the story is you can save a tremendous amount of money on a fantastic printer mm -hmm. that is absolutely still ahead of the curve compared to That's most right. other printers Yep. Um, simply by calling Lauren. No, no other caveats, no hoops to jump through. That's just the price right now. Yep. Uh, is it go on forever? Just until they're gone. Until they're gone? Yep. Okay. So that's not like a, a June or July time. No. Frame. Okay. Nope. Well, they last. All right. So get them while they last. Call up Lauren. Take advantage of the offer. Well, that's all we had this week. So everyone, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.